Hi, welcome back. This is Carrie Waltz, and I'm in my studio. You don't see me face to face today because I want to get right into day seven on Sky Study. And my question I'm going to answer in this video is how do I mix that blue? So I have French ultramarine blue. Let's see if I can focus on that. Okay, I have a video blue. I have cerulean blue. Sorry, get that to focus. And um, magnesium blue. Uh, the cerulean and the ultramarine are probably the ones you're most familiar with. The other two uh, I have been introduced to uh, by other artists. So as I was mixing today, I started each of these blues and just added white and look to see what if I just add white to it I put it on my palette knife and hold it over the color am I getting close yeah that's that's pretty close but it's still not quite oops sorry hit the camera it's still not quite green enough so the first one I tried was the magnesium then I tried oh, excuse me the cerulean then I tried the magnesium which is this one right here and mixed it in with white and I put that over there it looks a little light right now but honestly from from uh, oops see it's, just, it's the same color so yay I like that and that's so as the sky gets closer uh, above you it gets brighter and more intense so I took this same white or this same mixed color and I added a little more of the video excuse me the magne manganese I think I said it wrong manganese and I got another shade oop yep right on track so I added a little more and I was liking what I see but when I got further up it needed an additional color and what I ended up doing is taking a little bit of this video blue and adding it to the manganese blue hue with white and it got not much white and it got to be about that color so what I'm gonna do first just like my other uh, <laughs> well you haven't seen many of my videos on this technique because I haven't loaded them yet but this is day seven and I'm going to scrub in very, very, very thin coats of these colors to indicate uh, my background. And I'm trying to show how to cover the canvas with my commentary at the same time. Now this is a rectangle. I'm working square, so I'm kind of condensing what I want, which is also a uh, another thing you need to think about because you don't want to be s so stuck on your image that it has to be perfect so as I get up higher I'm getting a little darker I'm gonna go even behind where those clouds are because I'm working so thin and it's because I'm scrubbing it in Hey, that kind of rhymes. Then I'm scrubbing it in. Um, and this looks, this doesn't look as dark as what's in my um, picture, so I'm going to come in with that other color. Add to that. I want to, the, the blue skies that day were just phenomenal. So I want to make sure that the blue at the top really is reading deeper and richer. And, uh, I go with it real thin and dry. I don't have any mineral spirits in my brush. And honestly, you don't have to have these uh, fancy colors to make something like this. When you squint your eyes, I'm not even... It's still not the exact same color. Is Actually, it's a lot greener. So I'm going to, because of that, I'm going to add... A little more um, ultramarine to the top because when once it gets spread out it changes it gets lighter 
So I want to add a little more deeper color. And that's one thing I love to do is, ooh, that's a little too much. So what do you do when you have too much? Just wipe it off. It's no big deal. Another thing about uh, painting on these smooth panels is I can wipe it down. And I want it, I really want it thin. I want it there, but I don't want it thick. Because um, I'm, whoops, I know I'm going to be painting over it in some parts. Alright, so down here I might not be painting over it. I don't really want to get it on my photo. But as I mentioned before, in oil paint, you paint fat over lean. So this is a very lean part because it doesn't have much oil paint in there. It's not wet and juicy. I think I just got a notification that on my on my um, computer over there. I forgot to put it on silent. Okay, so I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna have some clouds in through here. I also note that they're somewhat orange, and the opposite of orange in and blue are uh, they're on the. They're complementary colors. They're on the color wheel opposite of each other. So I know when I add that orange in here, if I have too much wet blue under here, it's going to turn it to mud. And I don't want mud in my paintings. I do have a lot of blue here, but I'm not going to add that right now. I'm just um, working mainly on the, the light blue, the farthest things away from me and and that's how I like to start skies. I want to start skies with the, the part of the sky that's the furthest away. And I that's a little wider than it is. That's okay. Uh, my horizon line is way down here today. So I do want to indicate where that is. So I'm going to mix a little bit of blue that's very dark. So I'm going to take the my darkest blue that I've used so far, which is French ultramarine blue, because CAD red light is an opposite, well, it's not exactly opposite, but if you know CAD red light, it's very orange. It's very warm red. So I'm going to put a little bit of that very orange red in my um, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to get my T-square here. I'm going to line it up, slide it down to where I want my horizon. I want my horizon really low on this one. Um, not as low as it is in the photograph, but I want it low. And um, this line is going to be the water line. So I'm just holding that brush, I mean the T-square, in place and I'm just kind of scrubbing in where the water is going to be. Doing it this way, you know your horizon line is straight. There's a little bit at the end that's not quite, but it's going to be muted out with the dark trees and things in the foreground. Uh, this picture was taken one early, early morning, uh, actually in Alabama. And I was visiting a friend and her brother has a, a lake house on... Uh, on the, the, on the lake. Uh, Logan Martin is the name of the lake. So again, I'm just filling in kind of with a dull blue. It is not a very thick paint. That's a little thicker than I probably want right now. So I'm going to get my lovely paper towel because and drag some of that off. I'm not going to worry I'm not really worried about this line right now. Um, I'm going to soften it later. Soften it means I'm going to blur it. That's not my uh, important focus right now. So I'm going to get rid of that paper towel because it's kind of a mess. I have not put my brush in mineral spirits yet. I'm just wiping it with uh, a paper towel. See, so just wipe it off. I want to keep it really dry. 
All right, so now I'm going to look at this darker color, which is very similar to what I just did in the water, and I'm going to lay in with this darker color, scumbling dark, because this is early, early morning, and I'll, because this is going to be laid in so thin and so dry, I can then paint on top of it. Um, I've always, well, no, always is a bad word to use. Um, I've often used the method where I thin out the oil paint so that I can spread it out and um, want to create, you know, some movement in the clouds and leave some openings. I don't want it to all be the same. Um, continue my thought that I just got interrupted. Um, I, I do want, well, sorry, when you paint, when you paint, you're in your right brain, right side of your brain, that's spatial visual. So, uh, <laughs> when I'm in my spatial visual right brain, my left brain, which is my language logic side of my brain, uh, doesn't want to cooperate. So, when I lose track when I'm painting, it's because that's my, it's the way your brain's made. So um, if I get really quiet while I'm doing some demos, it's probably because it's a challenging part of the painting and I really need my mind to concentrate on what I'm doing so that um, being in the present mind, where my mind is actually aware of what I'm doing, that um, I'll do a better job. Karen Margulis says, don't, don't paint when nobody's at home, and I think that's, <laughs> I think that's so funny, but it's so true. Alright, so if I'm squinting at this, looking for my darks, and even though I don't have any other colors besides blue tones, I already have a nice feel of the location where I, you know, the, the flow of the clouds, and um, look, whoops, got a little there, let's try that again, I might have already had it on my hand, what's, what's really wet, not bad, not bad. So if you paint with oils, you know that if you can touch it like this and, and not get it all over you, you're, you're doing pretty good. So now I want to start with the lights because I'm now leaving the blue family. I'm going to smear this just a tad. I'm leaving the blue family and I'm going into the lights. A traditional oil is light over dark and fat over lean. This is very lean, very thin paint. Then, uh, the next layer will be a little thicker paint and uh, lighter in color. So when I'm changing to a lighter tone, then I actually rinse my brush with the mineral spirits. It, d d use odorless mineral spirits and have as less the least amount of toxicity as you can in your studio. So now my brush is again dry, but it's clean. Now I recently took a class, if you, when I post my other videos, I took a class with Albert Handel uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said, once you find a brush you really like, buy three of them, so that you can have one for your medium colors, tones, and another one for your darks. Okay, this looks a little, looks a little too yellow. I want it more orange. So I'm going to go pick up a little more of the redder tone here. Let's just go ahead and put, there's going to be some um, bright sunshine peeking through down here. And my brush has orange, now it has a little blue on it because 
this is dry, but I'm pressing pretty hard, so I'm actually picking up some of what was there. But because I have it on my brush now, these duller areas where there was some lighter color for the clouds, I can kind of come in. lay in that. Some of this up here is just wispiness. I don't want it thick. And I can add more light to it later. I just kind of want to indicate where it is. The darker side up here. I'm going to pick up a little. I'm, use, I'm trying to use some of the paint that I had in my painting yesterday. So, And I did not put it in the freezer. If I had to put it in the freezer, it probably would be cooperating with me a little better. So that's a better color. It's a little more peachy. So I'm going to come back and, and add some of that. Uh, that color was made with a quinacridone rose and Indian yellow. So I'm gonna, I, like, I like the dullness of that, but yet it still has some warmth. So I'll come back in and lay in some of these lighter tones uh, a bit later. But the sun is still, I mean, it's actually right in here. So the brightest part is going to be the undertone, under part of those clouds. So right now I'm in the shadow part of those clouds. And I'll still want to come back and add some purples and pinks on top. Again, this is just covering the canvas. I'm still on the base color, the base layer of paint. A little more pink in here. Again, scrubbing. <laughs> Oops. All right, watch your uh, watch your reference. I was just, I was doing what Karen said not to do. Don't paint when nobody's at home. So I'm going to clean that brush and I'm going to lift off that subtractive method when you wet something and pull it off. And because this is a clear, not clear, but smooth canvas, it's a ampersand gesso canvas, then I can kind of come back in and lay in that and it's a darker blue in there anyway so uh, so that's fine and if it didn't all come out it's okay because nobody you don't post well you usually don't post your photographs with your painting sometimes people do just to show that hey look look what I was painting from and it neat that I was able to get this done but again I'm trying to I'm trying to finish this in less than 30 minutes because that's when the Ooh, I've got I've been 18 minutes and 22 seconds. All right, so I have I want some darker tones in here. That's not that's too bright. Some ultramarine. Get some more of that. Cad red light. Mix it together. It gives me that dark blue again, but not as vibrant. If you you could have orange in there. Clouds have often have soft edges, so. I'm blurring out some of the edges so that um, they're not so harsh. Don't forget to wipe your brush if you're transferring too much of the wrong color into other parts of your painting. Some of this over here is pretty, pretty dark lines. So I want to put in the fairly decent darks before I come back in with the brighter brights. I want part of that to be a little more vibrant in the color right in here. So I picked up more of the true color of the blue. And just soften that edge. And if I go over my 30 minutes, I'll, I'll try to link the two, the two photos together. I'm learning editing, and I'm, I 
and uh, got a lot to learn. All right, look, that's a little too, too orange. And dull that down a little bit. Okay. There, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, distant uh, hill slash tree line. It's just the other side of the lake. That's way too purple. So let's see, the opposite of purple is yellow. So I want to dull that down so I can pick up some yellow and add to that. Um, I do want some of the blue that I've been using, but uh, that is the darkest part of the painting. So I'll, I still didn't dull it down enough. Still too, too purple. So I'll pick another color. I'm just, all I did is I looked to see what was the darkest thing on my palette because this is the darkest thing in the painting. So I just added it. And I'll try, I, want to, I want to try to go above that uh, horizon line that I had. And I got a little below it. That's all right. If I could lift off this painting and, and work a little at a different angle, it would be a little easier. But it's kind of hard to do that when you're videoing. So I'm going to wipe that off. Clean my brush a little bit from the darkest darks. And then I'm going to come back with a fairly clean brush. I'm going to drag across there. I didn't quite clean it up as much as I want, so I'm going to clean my brush again. It's, it's not so so clean that it's it's going to um, lift up down to the white, but you can now see that that's land in the distance. I want much brighter orange, so I'm going to come in now now that I have um, my tree line established, this is with thicker paint. So I'm just going to dab that in, being careful not to drag the paint that I just put in uh, into the br into the paint to where it's going to dull that. This is cad yellow medium, just straight out of the tube. But it's a really nice orange, pale orange. So that's giving me some vibrancy that I like. And I'm looking for the lighter tones in my painting. Uh, some of them will have some of this color in it. That's a little too yellow at this point, so I'm going to pick up a little more of that pink that I had on my palette. Again, that pink was from Quinacridin, Quinacridin Rose. And um, is I don't want so much, I had too much on my brush, so I just wiped it on a paper towel. I'm going to kind of thin this out. I want the, the pinker tone to be near the edge. If I pick up blue in my brush, I want to wipe it off. Just look for warmth in your clouds. Add the orange where you can. I'm going to pick, oops, sorry about that. Shake the camera. I have some yellow, um, Indian yellow with white mixed on my palette. Because if you look, there is nothing white in this painting. So. I'm not going to put pure white anywhere, but all this white down here is kind of bothering me. So I'm, I'm going to—I need to go ahead and cover that up, and then come back uh, with heavier paint to uh, finish this off. All right, I've kind of lost this line of pale blue that doesn't quite look like pale blue. Um, in this, it's not unclear if it's the sky. 
Um, let's see what I want to do with that. I want to make that a little more vibrant. Oh, that's too dark. Pick up a little white. I want it to, okay, see, this should not be darker than this. So how this, when I squint, this is actually darker than this because it's further up. So be aware of that. Make sure that you're paying attention to, um, see, that's too green. Go back to what I had mixed. Also, get a clean, ooh, sorry about that. My camera's really close to me because I'm, I don't have a zoom lens, so after a little bit of this YouTubing, whatever, I'll uh, <laughs> maybe after six months I can upgrade and have a have another have another lens. Okay, I'm re I'm overworking that area, so sometimes you just need to go away, come back to it later. I'm going to come back down in here where I know I need uh, some yellows. It's going to be thicker. I'm going to lay the yellow in and then come back with more orange on top. It doesn't really matter which direction you do with that. Um, like I said, traditional oils are dark first and then light, but sometimes I don't do that. And that's okay. I'm just laying in enough to get rid of that white. Make myself feel a little better. Isn't that weird how things like that help? Right, now I'm going to come back with the orange tones on top. The orange is a little thicker than the blue so that it's staying on the canvas. If that blue was really wet, I would have a hot mess. I would have made mud by now. And that's one thing I love about this method is I'm not making mud. Oh, that's way too bright to be that far off. You don't want your eye brought off the canvas. To So I'm going to dull that down a little bit. Let's use a little more purple then. Uh, yeah. That was a mixture from yesterday. A dull purple. I mixed uh, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and then added white to make a beautiful violet. And then I dulled it down with the cad yellow medium because the cad yellow medium was a kind of opposite in, in color. All right, so I'm looking here. So I need much lighter tones right here on the edge of this cloud. When I squint, everything is way too dark. So I need to get a chunk of white. I'm gonna pick up some, I'm gonna do Indian yellow right now. Indian yellow is like, they call it liquid sunshine and I believe it was Mary Gilkerson that said it's the only yellow that can be a cool and a warm yellow depending on how much white you add to it. So I'm going to come in here with quite a bit of light. That's close, but to me that's not warm enough. So I'm going to pick up a little another pile that was a little warmer. So I'm going to add light here. When I squint, these two values are actually very similar. Um, I never realized until I started working some plein air things how important squinting is. Because when you're out plein airing, painting on location, if you don't squint and get rid of some of the detail, you're going to be overwhelmed. Alright, so now I'm adding some more warmth. If I warm some of this up, when you have a choice, when something's not dark enough or the, cut, the value's not right, you have a choice. You can either darken it or lighten what's around it. Here I lightened what was around it, but now I need to darken. Alright, 
I hope I hadn't turned around too long and you were... I, my, my camera stopped because I went over that 30 minute mark and I didn't set an alarm. So I'm... What I just was talking about was when you add some light and see I added this light in here and it wasn't light enough and it might be where when I look at when I'm comparing my brush paint to what's on my um, photo it's really close to what's on my photo now this is really thick um, that's the fun part of this last bit of layers um, but when, when you add something that you think is light enough and it still doesn't read light enough, then you're going to have to adjust other things that are around it. So what I did there, and I'll come back and add more to it, is when I, and when I back up, I see that this is all really too warm. This, this has a lot of lavenders and purples. There's warmth along here. But I have the whole thing too warm, so um, I'm going to come in. I'm going to lift some of that up because it's not real thin. And now I'm going to come in. See, this is kind of a, lav a, a lavender cooler. I'm going to call it the back side of my clouds. I just I want want a little bit of coolness in amongst the warmth. And this is this is a little thicker. And you can get thicker and that'll help your help it cover. I didn't want that to be real bright because it's gonna pull my eye off the canvas. So again just very softly laying in. I want to maintain the blue, now again, now that I have that, this, that blue could be darker. So I'm going to come back where I mixed the blue to start with. I'm going to make that blue a little darker. That makes this blue make a little more sense. Um, I don't always put my fingers in the paint, but sometimes I do. And you know, don't get so hung up that it's got to be the exact blue. That's that probably is what uh, drives some of my students crazy. So just squint your eyes, see if you're getting the value right. It's not dark enough in here, so I'm going to add some more of that bluish violet. Add a little more uh, French onion. French onion. Oh, that's funny. I um, guess I'm hungry. Um, ultra, French ultramarine blue. So I can now lay some of that in a little thicker. Bring the line in. Spread it out. Painting oil is a, is a push and pull. So shove something over this way and pull it over that. I want that to be a little less yellow. So I'm going to take off some of that thick paint and I'm going to put some pinker tones in there. I want it a, yeah, I like that better. And drag some of that up here, put some of that over here. I, I'm barely touching the canvas, just letting it pick up a little of the paint. But, um, I'm liking that alright. I, when I backed up I saw that this is really light and it's not here so I'm just gonna come in blur some of that out dull it down because I don't want that much light up there. I like that better it's leading your eye further down. So now I'm looking here I like the warmth that I added in here there's some some more of that. I'm going to combine that pink with some of the orange to make it a, a darker uh, peachy color. Just adding a little bit of that in here. 
in between, kind of a transition between the blue and the yellow. I want you to see how straight this line is and how jagged this line is, so I need to add some variation. You don't want your, your clouds to be so uniform. Now, before I go away from this color, I'm going to drag a little bit of it in my water. Got a lot more than I meant to there. That's what happens when you have a lot on your brush. So, again, wipe some of that off. Yeah, it's no big deal. It's just a piece of canvas board. If you don't like what you do, paint over it later. Or wipe it down and start again. But I do want some of the colors that are in my sky to be gently reflected in my water. Now one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back and tap. I'll, because I'm working small, it's really hard to blur an edge. And I don't really want my distant line of um, land to be a harsh, see how hard that line is? I don't know if you can see it because I can't zoom in. But maybe you can zoom in on your computer or look at it. I want to blur that line of where the trees are. I just want to indicate that there's land back there. But I don't want such a harsh line on the trees. I'd rather have a harder line where the water is, but the trees, because they have leaves on them and they're you know, full of foliage, I don't want it to be as harsh as it is in the photo. Okay, um, add a little more pink tones to this. I, I just want some variation. I'm going to come back with the blue, the darker blue that I had mixed, and I'm going to look for ways that I can feather it out and change the shape of the clouds so they're not all smooth and in order. This part is on top so it can be darker. That's pretty dark and I don't want it to just end there, so I'm going to help, help uh, transition that off so it doesn't attract my eye. Hmm. I want to change. I'm just going to move. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just going to drag some of this paint into each other. Uh, the yellow maybe connect here and here. I want that a little warmer so I'm going to add a little more Indian yellow in there. That's I want it really glowing. I like that a lot better like that a lot better, so I'm going to just continue to add that. Um, dab a little bit more in here so it's not just a solid line of the same color. This is too green to be where it is right there. Matter of fact, I don't really like the water at all. Um, might make it darker. Because I, I hardly see it in here, but I don't, it's, it's distracting to me. So I can make this side fairly dark because most over here, everything over here is, is fairly dark. And um, I'm going to add some blues that were in the sky down in here just to add variation. Uh, it was just too much the same. Just change the direction and drag it across. Alright, 
I like that better. I'm going to back away. I, I normally back away a lot more than I do when I'm painting small demos. One thing I want to double check is the horizon line. So I'm going to get that tool again. Oops, flip it over. Yeah, it's still straight. So, but I need to step away so that I can really tell. Whoops. Hmm. It's a little lighter than the, the... When I stepped away, I noticed that the dark over here really continues over here all across. There's a connection of the two, and I really miss that. I don't know that you have to have that, but um, I'm going to put it in. So I'm now standing up, getting my French Ultramarine, mixing it in with a little bit of the Cad Red to make that darker tone. I want it a tad lighter than that, so I added some of the little bit of the purpley tone. It's, see, when I held it up, it's too purple. So I'm going to add a little bit more of a blue or green. I have to look that up. I think that's... I'm not going to guess. Alright, so I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to bring this all the way across in different layers. I don't want it... Uh, straight with, I don't want to drag it straight, it's these clouds that are are laying in. But it connects one side of the painting with the other, doesn't quite divide it as bad. And I like that a little better. I'm squinting my eyes to see where the dark is where the light is. Oh, that helped a lot. I hope y'all saw that. And there's also a lot of uh, layers in through here, so I'm going to come in and add a little bit more of that. Not totally wiping out what's there. Now I want to come back and add a little more light right in there. So I'm going to pick up my light yellow again. Big chunk of it. put your fingers in paint you probably should wear gloves and sometimes I do but I promise I'll wash my hands really well when this is over with so drag a little bit of color I want still some more color down in here get some more of the blue A little bit of the hint of yellow. Okay, I'm going to pretend that uh, day three, excuse me, well, what day am I? Day seven, I don't know where that three came from. I wanted to. Isn't that funny? I do this every time. I think I'm going to quit and then I back up. And I wanted to show how that connected right through there. I do like that better. Hmm. There's something about that. Yeah, I'm going to take, take the height of that down. That looks better for where it was. Nothing was very tall in that distant land. I'm going to add a little more orange and then I'm going to walk away. 
You think that's possible? I hope so. And feel free to comment. <laughs> if like, oh, you should have stopped 10 minutes ago. Or, oh, I think I'll try this. If you, if you try something like this, would you please send me a post? Uh, show me what you did. Uh, and you know, don't worry about it being uh, absolutely. And well, don't even worry about it being the same. You know, it, it'll be be yours. Um, one thing I do like to do when I work small is sign it with. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Uh, it's too close. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, on. Um, with a, I think it's called a wipeout tool. It's kind of cool because that's what it does. It wipes out. And I'm, I just brace my finger here. And when I paint small, I usually just sign my last name. I mean, my first name. Man, I need to go eat or something. My brain is not functioning. So there is day seven. I hope you got something out of it. Um, let me know what you think. And uh, happy creating. When I am doing that, it's just, it just is in, it's my happy place. Uh, one other little trick. If you don't know the, tri the joy of these wet ones, get the fresh scent. For some reason, there's something in this fresh scent that takes oil paint off. And it's really pretty gentle. Oh, I was a mess today. I'm not usually that bad. I guess it was trying to trying to maneuver around a camera. Okay, so I'm getting all clean and then I'll go wash with soap and water so I don't get things on everything in my house, including my cats. So, happy painting, happy creating. Thank you for following me. Please subscribe if you haven't. Look down. Uh, on the button and hit that subscribe button. I can't believe I, as of painting this, I've already doubled my subscri subscribers. So if you're following me, I really appreciate it. It is a new venture and I'm learning. So as you can see, got a lot to learn, but hopefully I can teach you something along the way. Thanks for watching. Bye.